Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. A Slice of Earth, written by Tabaxi499. You are human, I asked, with shock, looking at the painter I hired. He came highly recommended by the Information Guild, near-perfect reviews detailing his creativity and position, but failing to mention his race. A Linrin, Loxa, or Vixlix would have been expected. Well, even a Mu or Chaharlahara would have made some sense. But the greatest fighters in the galaxy has ever seen. They storm citadels and fight off monsters, not paint buildings. Um, the human said with exasperation. I understand the stereotype my species carry, but they are greatly exaggerated. A small percentage of humans do serve as mercenaries, imperial guards, and, yes, even the shepherd, but most of us are just like you, Leo the painter, said, almost like he was reading it from his flashcard. I'd never even considered humans as anything but warriors, some cruel, some heroic, but always warriors, never artists. So you are a retired fighter, or? I asked, leaning in. No, I have never picked up a sword or shot a blaster. I don't wear a shield, and I fly a beat-up stargazer, with no weapon mods. My parents were artists, and while I respect the bravery of some of my people, I have never and will never fight, he said, clearly annoyed. So let's forget about me killing your rivals, avenging your people, or smuggling goods. I am a painter. What do you want me to paint? He said, taking a deep breath. That must be rough, to have everyone assume that you're something you're not. Well, uh, this whole place, really. I said, gesturing to the peeling paint inside my restaurant. It hasn't had a makeover since my parents ran this place, so I was thinking that you could put some life back into it. I was kind of hoping for something stylized and original, some kind of theme that would get people in the door. Any ideas? Hmm, about human art. Everyone knows all about us now, and I haven't really seen anywhere else doing it. Plus, you can say a human actually painted it. Hang a picture of me doing it up on the wall. Might get people curious about what kind of culture humans had back on Earth, Dio said, looking around. That's a great idea. You can make new versions of paintings you remember from before and use some old human styles. Go nuts. Just make sure that all the old stuff is covered up. I said, beaming. This was a really good idea. Human culture has been all the rave since the few surviving ones were rescued from Earth. Oh, maybe I could even serve some human food here. Or at least convince people we served human food. Could I ask you some questions about humans while you work? I asked as Leo began scraping old, old paint off the walls. Be my guest, Leo said with a shrug. Well, first of all, if human culture isn't about war and bravery, what is it about? Well, those things do play a role in our culture. I think it has more to do with personal relationships. Oh, that's a lot like my people, I said with a little tail wag. Yeah, the Lindren and humans actually get along pretty well normally. Lots of humans end up living on Lundgren worlds if they don't want to fight. I remember my parents mentioning something about that. Places like the Imperial home world can be a bit much for a human since it's a lot of us lived in more isolated places near the end, he said, a bit downtrodden. What was Earth like in the end? I asked, walking over to him. As bad as you've heard. Humans panicked when they heard the world was ending and kind of brought it on themselves. I was young at the time, and a lot luckier since both my parents were still with me. The three of us stayed in the woods, so we didn't see any of the really bad stuff, and we all left together in the end. People were good before that. We built things, we got scared or angry or something, and we ruined it all, Leo said, continuing to scrape. I didn't even know humans could feel fear, I said, surprised. No, you're kidding. We are total scaredy scales. It would take me longer to list off half the things we get afraid of than to paint this place. He said with a chuckle. Are you afraid of anything? I asked, tail wagging. No, of course. The Lexrex, for starters. No way. The Lexrex are harmless. What are they going to do? Hop on you? I asked, making a jumping motion. Quit it. Those things look a lot like grasshoppers from Earth, and those always got me worried. Were grasshoppers dangerous? No, not at all. Then why were you so afraid of them, silly? I laughed as my tail wagging. I told you that we humans are scared as scales, he said with a smile. Tell me something else about humans, I asked, tail wagging hard. Well, we had a lot more pets than any alien I've ever seen. Oh, that's right. You domesticated animals in your home world. What did you use them for? In the modern day, not much. We just kind of liked having little furry friends around to keep us company. Guess that's why we like the Linren so much, Leo said with a smile. 
Lindren are not human pets, I said lightly, punching Leo. I will have you know that we are highly intelligent species. Is that so? Then you wouldn't mind telling me more about the Lindren culture, Leo said, finishing off the scraping. Mask away, I said, tail still wagging. What's the deal calling all your priests parents? Leo asked as he started mixing paints. Yeah, the protected church is kind of weird. They are really nice, but they act like we're all family, and that the leaders are all parents. I know they don't mean it exactly like this, but it always made me feel like I was a kid, I said, watching him focus on the paints. He had brought a few basic colors, along with a few dyes to blend in. He was making a light blue. That seemed relaxing. Honestly, some earth religions did the same thing, but we called the priests fathers, Leo said, getting onto a ladder to start with the seeding. Ah, that's the worst. Why start with the seeding? Why not just go for something simple and walk to get yourself warmed up? I'm going to start with something I know, something famous, that most humans will probably recognize, Leo said as he began to spread a mix of his mixed blues and pure white paint. The seeding was round, so it would be pretty hard to paint. Was the thing you're making originally on a curved surface, or are you going to have to adjust? I asked a little nervously. Leo was good, but I was worried he might be taking on something too tricky. I was expecting him to keep the seeding monocolored, like it had been. It was actually on a seeding, just a much bigger one, so I'm just going to do a part of it here, he said, focusing on more on his burgeoning art. Humans painted their seedings, not most of them, but this huge building, a holy building, had its whole seeding painted. My parents took me to see it when I was a kid. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. The building was 130 feet long by 40 feet wide, and every inch of that ceiling was painted incredibly, Leo said with reverence. How many people did it take to do that? Just one human. I was shocked one human painted something that big alone, and it turned out so wonderfully. Why are humans so amazing? You paint ceilings and liberate planets, then still have time to chat with little old me. Some of us are amazing, some of us are monsters, but most of us just are. A lot of us, even some of the good ones, live in the shadows of the great ones and terrible ones. Leo said, losing himself in the art. What kind of human are you? I asked honestly. Leo wasn't a fighter, but it was art who began to take shape. I did wonder if there was more to him than the average painter. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me after I finished, he said, glancing down with a smile. With that, I left him be. For the next few hours, I was trying to think about how to capitalize on this new human theme, but my conversation with Leo wouldn't get out of my head. There was something more to him. I thought as I crumpled up an idea of human-themed meals and threw it in the trash. I checked the time and realized how late it was getting, then left my office and was surprised to see Leo still there painting. Don't look yet, he asked pleadingly. I covered my eyes and said, I did pay you. Why can't I see the work in progress? I want it to be a surprise. Let me lock up tonight. I think I can finish it by Monday. Neo, you don't have to work over the weekend. I have the place closed for the next two weeks, so you have plenty of time to do a good job. But not something great, Leo said, looking at me with an intensity that could only come from a human. Okay, I'll see you Monday, I said with curiosity. Let's see what this human can do. Over the weekend, I almost returned to my little restaurant nearly every hour. At one point, I had got in my ship and started the engine, only to change my mind. I was so curious what Leo was making, but I wanted to give him time to finish. When I did arrive on Monday, the smell of paint was heavy in the air. Leo's ship wasn't there, but the place was locked up. I unlocked the door and stepped inside, not knowing what to expect. When I looked up to see Leo's work, I wept. On my ceiling was a human on the ground, reaching for a divine figure upheld by flying humans. The detail was extraordinary. Every time I thought I'd seen it all, there was something more to see. On the floor by the ladder was a tablet with the original painting, which he must have used as a reference. It was identical, besides the cracks that had been formed over time. I called Leo right away, too. Well, I don't even know why, really. I just needed to speak to a person who had transformed my restaurant. I called him, and he answered in a daze. Hello, who is this? This is Kanzo. Listen, I just saw the ceiling. It's wonderful. I can't believe that you were able to make something like this. I'm gonna pay you extra and free food for life, I said, my tail feeling like it was gonna fall off. I'm not finished yet. What do you mean? It looks amazing. I hope so. But I still have to do the walls. 
Oh, I can just put a red coat on. You already scraped off the old stuff, so we can call it good. I don't want to call it good. If you'd let me, I'd like to paint your walls too. Show off some more human art. I was stunned. Will you let me? Of course, I said ecstatically. For the next two weeks, Leo worked on my restaurant. Each bit of the wall a different style from a different time or place. We talked while he worked and we talked and I learned a lot about humans and Leo. He told me about human food, which I started trying to recreate to his delight. We talked about human movies that we could show at the restaurant for our new movie night. This had always been a family-friendly restaurant, but Leo talked me into showing PG-13 and R-rated movies later in the evening when all the kids had gone to bed. Those were the human equivalent of developing and develop-only movies. There were even some movies that existed solely to scare the viewer, called horror, which Leo really liked. Once a month, we'd play a few back-to-backs. His parents had managed to hold onto our hard drive with thousands of movies and other human stuff when they left, and Leo thinks that we can find more amongst other humans. On the last day, Leo was scheduled to work for me. There was almost nothing left to do, just a few more dishes to clean up, but I had something else in mind. Leo, you've completely changed this place with me, I said, holding his hands and wagging my tail. Don't mention it, Leo said with a smile. He had a lovely smile. I've been thinking, and I've decided that I couldn't have made this change without you, and I can't keep up without you. You're offering me a job, Leo said puzzled. Yes, as a manager here, you know so much about humans, and I can see how passionate you are about bringing back human culture. So maybe we could do it together, I said, tail wagging. Yeah, let's do it, Leo said with a smile. So he did. The hard drive Leo's parents gave us had a few human cookbooks from around the world, so we started trying to find new ingredients to replace the ones on Earth. The meats and veggies were relatively easy, but the spices and herbs were a lot more challenging. It took us six months till we could find a replacement for ginger, but we did. We decided it would be best to change the name, something to fit the new theme. We went with a slice of Earth, and according to Leo, it was. Within a year, word had gotten out across the universe that this was the first restaurant to serve authentic human dishes, and the humans came running. Everyone from simple mechanics to the most deadly mercenaries in the Empire came to give our food a try. In fact, half the Imperial Guard became regulars. Two of them cried after eating our curry, one because it reminded him of his mother's cooking, and the other because it was too spicy. Whenever some important human would come, Leo or I would take our pictures with them. The important humans loved it, and so did everyone else. Leo told me it was kind of a human tradition, but it wasn't just humans that came. It seemed like creatures came from every corner of the known universe, hoping to see a celebrity or just wanting to try human food. The movie nights were popular with everyone. It took watching the movies to fully understand humans. They were all warriors in a way, but not all of them fought with sword. Some fought with their minds, competing to see who could crack the Enigma Code, while others fought with their voices to see who would be the next American idol, but most fought with their words, bargaining, debating, and mocking. A human loved nothing more than to be heard, especially the quiet ones. After a year and a half of working together, Leo and I were closing down after movie night. We played Shrek for our kids' movie, and people loved it so much we played the next two for the adult movies. Two smugglers loved it so much they started crying. Did you see the couple crying over the Shrek? Leo asked me as we were putting the last dishes away. Lindren and the Hattias. I didn't think they were a couple, I said as I finished sweeping the floors. Yeah, it's kind of weird that Lindren would date a totally different species, Leo said, walking over to me. It's not so weird. It's actually pretty common for Lindren to date other races, I said, hoping I knew where this was going. Yeah, but the Astias is so much bigger. There's not really a problem. It just means that they give better hugs, I said, tail picking up speed. But they don't have any fur, Leo said, stepping right in front of me. Oh, that's fine. Fur can get so messy, I said, my tail wagging furiously. But they, I stopped Leo before he could finish, jumping onto him and giving him a loving kiss. But I don't care about those things. You're sweet, driven, and I like you, Leo, I said, clinging to him. He hugged me back. For those who don't know, human hugs are legendary. There is nothing in the universe so warm, calming, or safe as a human wrapping their strong arms around you. 
even by human standards, this hug was amazing. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank all the T5 channel members and patrons. Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Lord Azrakal, Holly's sister, Dragzoon WRE, and Ambrose Catel. Thank you very much.